Hey y'all, welcome back for day two of this renovation series. Um, yesterday, if you watched that video, I pretty much prepped everything to be able to um, prime today. So that is exactly what I did, spoiler alert. So I ended the uh, video yesterday by cleaning the walls and now you see I am sanding them again. I promise there is a method to my madness. Um, so I am sanding the walls with 220 grit sandpaper. You basically just want to scuff them up enough uh, for the primer to be able to grip onto it. Um, now there is a kind of a variation in this because the walls in these campers are basically um, they have some type of wallpaper kind of glued to the top of them. And these cabinets are not like cabinets that you would find in your house. They are actually um, usually made of MDF, uh, which is a type of like pressed cardboard pretty much. And if you sand the cabinets too much, then you will actually mess them up and you will never be able to get them smooth again. So I have gotten a lot of um, ridiculous comments over the years about me not properly sanding the cabinets, but I assure you this comes from experience where I have sanded down a cabinet before that was this MDF stuff and I sanded it down too much and then you expose basically the cardboard underneath and there was no going back. So for this, I'm going to scuff them up. Now, the cabinet doors are usually made of wood. Those I will sand down a, a bit more heavily than these. Um, but for now, this is really all that the walls and the cabinets need. I'm also going to remove any shelving and any extra um, whatever it may be on the walls. Um, you see there were some coat hangers there that I took down and um, the little clips that kind of keep the doors closed. I also took all of those off. Um, so anything you don't want paint on, I would suggest taking off the walls now because, you know, it's going to get messy. Um, you see I have a couple things left on the side right there. That's just a hot water heater switch, a light switch, um, and I'll end up taking those off. I actually don't keep any of the light switches. And I'm going to pause that thought so you can see this water from yesterday to see why I washed the walls first and then sanded because that was the first wash and it was absolutely disgusting. So that's why I washed it first was to get most of the crud off. That way when I go back the second time, it's really just a matter of getting all of the dust off. Anyway, back to my thought about the light switches. Um, I don't keep any of the light switches or the electrical outlets. Um, they're usually this like yucky, like yellow color. And I just think for aesthetic purposes, it's gross. I don't paint them either because I literally don't even want to waste my time with that. I would rather spend $7 on a new switch than try to paint it and then have it scratch every time you touch it. So that's just my two cents. So those two switches right there, I will end up taking those out and replacing those. Super easy to do that. I'll include that in the video too. Now the walls are clean. So there's really one last thing that I want to do before I start painting. And that is putting the panels back in the bottom of these cabinets. So if you watch the demo series, you'll see that I took these cabinets out and then I put them back up on the last um, episode that I did. And um, I had to take the bottom panel out in order to get them apart and get the electrical out. So what I'm doing here is just cutting new pieces for this. This is just um, five mil millimeter underlayment. It's nothing special. You can find this literally anywhere. I like to use this over the eighth inch paneling just because it's a little less flimsy and it is made of real wood, which is always a plus. Um, and because I have two sides, you see I'm making two pieces here that will be identical um, because nine times out of 10, unless you put it back wrong, the sizes will be the same. Y'all also don't fuss at me for having my blade too high. It was too late before I realized it was too high and I just didn't care. So that's where I'm at. Anyway, uh, so I put these in, they fit perfectly. Yeah, I basically just slide them in and then kind of push them up because uh, there's framing underneath it. So you kind of just scooch it in the little half inch gap where the framing is. If you have ever done this, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, and then I just put some crown staples in these um, just to secure them down. And that's pretty much it. Then I can move on to the middle section. Now, if I was smart when I took this middle section out, I would have taken the bottle the bottom panel out instead of the panel that's inside of it but I did not think ahead that much so 
I'm going to have to piece this together because um, obviously that whole piece will not fit in between the small sections, the small openings that I have here. Um, so I just cut several pieces. You see I uh, kind of split the framing right there to give each piece a little spot of framing to rest on and then stapled it down. And that's pretty much all it is to that. So next we move on to priming, finally. And I always feel so weird when I get to this point in a renovation because I think to myself, I am clearly not ready for this. Like I have not done nearly enough to get to this point because I know that once the primer goes on, uh, this renovation really goes fairly quickly after that. Um, this one will be no exception. There's still some other things that I'll have to build like the couch and um, you know, put together the kitchen and I also have to do the bathroom, which is going to be a whole thing because there's nothing in the bathroom other than those shelves. So I have to redo the shower, redo the plumbing. It's all in my brain. I have a list. But um, anyway, I was kind of excited to paint this because that's really when you start to see that transformation from like old and brown to like fresh and white and clean. And so it's just really exciting when I finally get to this point. Now let's talk primers because I recorded myself uh, basically priming this entire section right here. So it's going to take a minute. So I am using um, Kills Primer. I think this is Kills 2. Um, really like Kills. I would highly suggest using that. I've never used any other brand. So I can't really attest to if the whatever it is like Billet or something. I don't know. There's a bunch of other brands. I've never used them because if... It ain't broke, don't fix it. So, and I've always loved Kills. It sticks really good to the walls. Um, they, um, there's a Kills 3 that I also really like. I think that's the one in the gold can. It's a little bit more expensive. Um, but if you have like spots where you have like stains coming through, it's really good to hide those stains. Um, and as you can see, my husband's coming in to check on me because I've been out in this camper in a hundred degree weather for like three hours. Um, anyway, I thought that was nice of him. Um, but anyway, so yeah, Kills is great. I love it. I buy it in the two gallon bucket there. It's like super affordable for that. And you'll use that entire two gallon bucket. Um, so I would suggest just go ahead and buying it in bulk because you're going to spend more money buying the can separately. Now, this is the great debate between RV renovation people. Some people do not paint inside cabinets and some people do. I have always been the part of the people that paint inside the cabinets because my OCD could literally not handle it if I opened the cabinet and it wasn't white. Like everything else is white. Why would I not paint that too? I already have the paint out. Why would I not do it? Is it a pain in the butt? Yeah, it sure is, but it looks so good. So that's really why I do that. Now, I know some of you are also thinking, why is she hand painting this and rolling it instead of spraying it? Does she not have a sprayer? Yes, I do have a sprayer, but I do not like to spray the inside of the campers. And there's a few reasons why. The first reason is it's probably just pure laziness because the amount of time it takes me to tape off the windows and everything else, it just is, I could have hand painted it like three times. The second reason is there's a ridiculous amount of overspray and I just don't like that. It uses a whole lot of paint and wastes a lot of paint and that just seems unnecessary. And the third reason is, is there's, I don't know if you know anything about sprayers, but they're not continuous all the time. So I may have a spot that looks really good, that has the perfect amount of primer on it, and I may have a spot that is dripping and I just don't like that. So I would have to go back over it and get the drips anyway. Um, so that's my main reasoning for just hand painting. I do, um, spray all of the cabinet doors. I will spray that. Um, and any, basically anything else that's outside of the camper. I have a spray room, um, that's upstairs in my shop and that is where I use, um, the sprayer. So, I mean, if I can take it out and I don't have to worry about taping things off or overspray or if it's small enough to where I can get, um, basically a good smooth stroke, going on the cabinet doors or whatever else I'm painting, yeah, I'm absolutely going to use it. And I actually have a really nice sprayer, so you don't get as much splatter as you do with some of the other ones, but um, I don't know. And plus, I have to clean the sprayer, and that takes a lot of time, so I don't know. It just, it just, I, there's a lot of advantages, but there's also a lot of disadvantages. So, I mean, do what you will with that information. 
whatever works best for you is what is best. So you do you. Now I really only got the front part of this camper done. I didn't even get to the back, um, but this primer needs to cure for at least 24 hours. Um, so that means you don't sand it, you don't touch it, you don't paint over it, you don't do anything for at least 24 hours. I mean, that is like a minimum to me. The longer it sits, the more it cures and the better it cures and the harder it gets. So as long as you can leave it on as long as possible, that's exactly what I would do. So I am going to um, start on the backside tomorrow. Um, so you may not see a video of me tomorrow because there won't really be a whole lot. But um, hopefully I'll get another video to you guys in the next two days. So have a great night.